Calm down. Calm down. You just... <laughs> it's all right. It's perfect. Oh. This is all we're doing for 20 minutes, by the way, so. Oh! Eric, if I can pass you those. Sir, pass you those over, thank you very much. Right, well, we have, we have the big men in the ring. We have arguably the finest beards in the building as well. Um, let's see, you're gonna have questions, let's get some answers. So, over here, you, straight away. Here we go. We'll see. Oh, man. Okay, what's your question? Uh, if, in Katray narrative, why can't you do super kicks and Canadian destroyers and suicide dives? Because they're overused. Everyone does them in every match, so if we ban them, it makes them special. So when you do get to see one, it means something. Huh? That's cool. Uh, question over here. You were, you were very quick, sir. Quick off the mark. Go ahead. Will you ever come back to the WWE? Will you ever come back to the WWE? Never say never. Never. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question here as well. Go ahead. Yeah, who's the best wrestler you've been in the ring with? Other than myself? Um... I, I, everyone, I'm so blessed. Um, I was really, really lucky of coming in and the way I did into the business. Uh, uh, I was paired with the likes of my friends sitting next to me, the late, great Brody Lee, and these guys took me under their wings. So it's like any opportunity that I got was a blessing, you know. Um, this is such an unbelievable sport, and the camaraderie and stuff, it's a brotherhood. I mean, these guys, we might not bleed the same blood, but we'd die for each other. So, you know, that's, it's just special to get out, be able to go out there and do it every night with people like this. And for me, uh, I'd say John was the best rival, opponent, partner you could ever ask for. Uh, one of the best to ever do it in the ring and one of the best guys I've ever known in, in life. So, him hands down. Thank you, thank you. So, a question from this gentleman you might find familiar. Until, if you do go back to WWE, I definitely want to see you guys together in AEW team up. Like, yeah. see, I want to see you guys together again. You know, it's been a long time. You know, so yeah, I'd love to see that again. And even if uh, Bray decided to join as well, who knows? Well, like I said, that, that whole never say never thing. You know, I mean it. Yeah, uh, we could show up anywhere, anytime, and I don't. I don't think there's three people on this earth that could stop us from doing whatever the hell we wanted to. Young man, see. Was there ever a time where you thought like you're really injured and like you can't do wrestling anymore? Uh, was there ever a time you you uh, got really hurt or you felt you were really hurt? And you thought you might not be able to wrestle again. Every time I had to have surgery, I've had over five different surgeries, all from stuff that happened in the ring. And every time you have a surgery, you think that's it. You don't think you're going to be able to make it back. So don't take things for granted. Like, that's kind of like the thing when it comes to life and period. And for me, so uh, some people know, a lot of people don't know. Um, January of 2015, I ruptured my L5-S1 disc in my back, and it cut into my sciatic nerve, and it completely paralyzed my left leg. Um, WWE flew me to Pittsburgh. I had an emergency rush surgery on a Sunday morning, and I got 85% of my use back in my leg. So. I've wrestled my entire career with 15% atrophy in my left leg. I've had three surgeries. My teeth are fake. I've had multiple concussions. But I wouldn't change a damn thing because I love this. Cool. Uh, we got something from over here, a question over here. Uh, we'll come to you then, then yourself. Go right ahead, my friend. Do you have any good Brody Lee stories? I got tons of them. Some of uh, them. I can't tell on a microphone because there's kids here, but, uh, oh, man. Probably just John yelling at me. Um, he was 
such a blessing to have him around. Like I said, the man was so talented and just an unbelievable wealth of knowledge. And that poor son of a gun had the, the, the job of teaching me how to wrestle. So it was funny. A lot of times I was doing stuff and I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just trying to figure it out on the way. And Brody would be standing on the apron just screaming at me, what are you doing, you big idiot? That does not work here figure it out. So it was just the, 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 the love hate relationship. And he was hard on me because he cared. And, and you know, like the whole group of us, you know, that's what I said, the Wyatt family, it, it's something special. And it's something that I doubt will ever be seen in a squared circle ever again. So, you know, just having that opportunity and things like that, it's just, it's, it's crazy to think back now, how much we took that for granted. And then I had one story I'd like to share, uh, it, it involves, uh, John would always slap me in the ring. And I would always ask him, hey, slap me in the face. This will, this will be good. The crowd always John. seemed to like it when he slapped me in the face. Well, sometimes he'd get yeah. carried away. And for the longest time, I can handle it. I can, I can deal with getting slapped in the face. And uh, it's, this is what I call the long haul joke on him. I never slapped him back <laughs> until one time at a live event, and uh, he was not expecting it. So the <laughs> look on his face was, was priceless because he knew I got him. And he just kind of opened his mouth, dropped down to the ground, and went out of the ring. He had nothing left to say about that one. So I got one up on him. Right. We, we have a question just over here to your left, sirs. Uh, is there a wrestler that you haven't had a match with that you'd like to? Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone. I love wrestling. I don't care. I don't care. Anybody that wants to step in this ring and get these hands at the end of the day. I mean, uh, as far as, yeah, I don't know. Um, I want to see you and Moose. Oh, I would Moose. Actually, I would like to wrestle Moose. He's a big boy. He can move around. I mean, I don't know if he's up for climbing up this mountain, but, you know, not many are. I could go with Moose. Let's go with Moose. I'd like to wrestle Moose one of these days. Like I said, never say never. You don't know where I'll show up, but you'll know when I'm there. Mm -hmm. It's constant one-liners. Full <laughs> of crap. You know that. Uh, we have a question here. Go ahead, sir. Hello, uh, this question was for Joseph. I was wondering when you had that gimmick with the basket with the spider inside, was it planned out what was going to be in there and what did you think to that gimmick? It wasn't a gimmick. It was a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked this question? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand up, please. <laughs> please, don't, please don't slap him. So, so yes, uh, I was told, um, I think after I worked Seth and got pinned by a forklift, uh, <laughs> that, hey, we want you to be quiet, not talk anymore, and uh, we're going to give you a God. cage. <laughs> My first response was, what? <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, I, I went and I asked, what, why, what is it? Oh, you're going to have a feud with Seth. He's going to curb stomp this, this rat that you have. Perfect. Quickly after he turned heel, it made no sense. They didn't know what to do. Oh, let's just have you carry the cage around for months and months <laughs> and months. We're going to draw it up and build it up. Uh, and then what is it going to be? Here's some ideas. No. Here's some ideas. No. Oh, I know what it's going to be. <laughs> and what was it? A robotic spider. <laughs> So yeah, it was. It was. It's. It's a storyline. It's your job. You do it the best you can. Everybody remembers it. So, good or bad, there you go. Stand up again, please. Can Some... everybody boo this gentleman? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> uh, I have a question here from this gentleman. Shout it out. Why is your company called Controller Narrative? Because that's our look and our outlook on life. Controlling your narrative is living your life how you want to. It's your life. It's your rules. Make sure you're happy. Do whatever you have to do to be happy in life as long as you don't take someone else's happiness away. 
and it's all about the quality of life. You get one chance at, at living life. You make the most out of it. You control your narrative, and you lived it to the fullest. And nobody can tell Excuse you me. that you Excuse can't, because it's your life. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That was a very precocious question from a very small child. Um, and from one young man to another. Oh, stop. Uh, big fan, first of all. Uh, just wanted to say, or well, wanted to ask, my favorite like era for, as a child, obviously, was Attitude Era. And I just wanted to know, if you had been in the Attitude Era, what feud would you have liked to have been in? Mm. Hardcore Championship. Uh, Wyatt Family versus the Brothers of Destruction. Uh, license to print money. Right, I'm going to run around the front for the moment. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, gents. Run. Stop shouting run at me. It doesn't make me go any faster. Here we go. Go ahead. Hello. Hello again. Um, hello, everyone. I don't remember, remember me. Um, if you could pick any fight that was your absolute favourite, what would it be and why? And both of you, sorry. Much, yeah. Uh, for me, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we had a match there for a pay-per-view, um, Wide Family versus The Shield. Uh, and since you don't get many wins in your hometown, that's probably one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm for me, like, I'm the king of the gimmick matches. I mean, I'm a walking gimmick, look at me. Uh, any of the street fight stuff, uh, to be honest, one of my favorite matches because it was just so physical and all the crazy stuff we did was in Philly against Bobby Lashley, the last man standing match where I Davy Boyd him off the second story of the building. Um, and all those matches were my favorite. Like, I, I'm such an idiot. Like, I love pain. And I'm such a weirdo for it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, any anytime I can get out there with weapons and things like that, the multiple man matches. I, I really love the uh, fatal four way I had at SummerSlam with Samoa Joe, Roman, and Brock. Uh, but yeah, I mean, or the feud with Roman Reigns. I mean, God, we broke millions of dollars over stuff. Yeah, I, I really can't honestly narrow it down to one match. I, I yeah, I've had so many crazy awesome matches. It's just I'm, yeah, I count my blessings every day. Just just selfishly as well, the. Um that night where I ain't finished with you yet happened and it just built and built. What was that like? It was just, it happened. Like, I, that, that wasn't planned. It just randomly came out of my mouth. The same thing with Get These Hands. Like, it was crazy when they just let me be me. What happened instead of, like, handing me a script with a bunch of shit on it. <laughs> fair play, fair play. We have a question here to my left. Shout it out. Uh, if you ever want to come back to WWE, who would you most and least want to fight? most and least want to fight. Well, I would love to dethrone that cocky, arrogant Roman Reigns right oh. now. And I think I'm probably the only person on this planet that could do it. Um, and not want to fight? I, I want to fight everybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, whatever. Like I said, I, I, I love this. I, this is my release and my escape from reality of, uh, getting to take my anger and frustration out on some other poor soul. Anything for yourself, Eric? I don't know. Fair. <laughs> that is possibly like, the... Like you said, you, you always, if you're going to say you want to fight somebody, you want to fight whoever's on top. Yeah. And that, right now, is Roman. So that would be the answer, hand down. As to, as to who you wouldn't want to work, somebody dangerous. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Perfect stuff. Like me. <laughs> okay, I'm coming around this way. Just bear with me a second. Excuse me. Right, go for it. Next question for Adam. Um, your receipt from Brock Lesnar. How did you... Did you have any words with him afterwards or anything about that? Yeah, we, like, laughed it off in the back because, like, after he blasted me with the right hand, I tried to kill him with a clothesline, too, and we both were, like, stopped at a second and looked at each other like... We're going to keep doing this. And I was like, I don't want to keep hitting you, and I don't want you to keep hitting me because it doesn't feel good. So let's just let's wrestle, and then we'll figure it out later. <laughs> I, I am proud of it, though. I think I'm the only human being to take a right hand from Brock Lesnar and not get knocked out. So I pat myself on the back for that. Cool. 
Right, we have one here. Go ahead. What were your dealings with Vince McMahon like? Day to day, it changes. Vince is a very interesting human being. Um, usually, you can tell by looking at his face if he's in a good mood or a bad mood. So you avoid him when he's in his bad moods, and you approach cautiously when he's in his good moods. I liked him in a bad mood. Okay. Oh, he's coming to me. Oh, he's running away. As long as it wasn't bad at me, yeah. I like watching him be mad at other people. I hate it when he was mad at me. Sorry. Excuse me. Right. Young man over here. You ran away when I said you were going to get the next one. Yep. Go right ahead. If, if you could rob any of the WWE superstars wrestling move, whose would you rob and why? If you could take anyone's wrestling move, whose would it be and why? As in steal from them. Yeah. Super kick. <laughs> Shooting star press. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I've come to you already, so I'll just go over there. Excuse me. There we go. Right, uh, go ahead. And this question's for Adam. With your universal title run, is there any regrets or things that you would have done differently? Beat Goldberg in front of 100,000 people instead yeah. of none. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the biggest thing. The only thing for me was just I would have loved to have the opportunity to do it in front of the fans. You know, I'm very proud of the guys and girls that stepped up with myself during the pandemic because it was really, it was really, really hard. Like cold storylines, wrestling in front of no one. Like you can hear yourself breathing out there. It was very, very stressful. And it, it made everyone tighten their game up, you know, because you're under such a microscope. You can't hide behind the reactions of the crowd and all the other stuff. So it was very, I'm, I'm very, very proud. It was a hard time, not only for us as wrestlers, but the entire world. And we were the only company, the only entity in the world that was getting content out for our fans to help take their minds off of what was going on in the real world. And I can't be more proud of the, the guys and girls in the WWE for stepping up at that time when the world was in a crisis. Magnificent. Okay, question here. Question for Adam. If you could pick up your favorite fight, what would it be and why? Oh, uh, man, probably like street fights. Like I said, it's just... There's, there's really no rules. It's a, yeah, if it's not bolted down to the ground, I'm probably going to pick it up and hit you with it. And even if it's bolted down, I'm going to try and rip it up and hit you with it. Uh, cool. Stuff, I'm just wandering around here. Any questions over here? Anyone? I'm lost amongst the, the people. Excuse me, excuse me, coming through. Uh, yes, sir, ask away. Uh, uh, question to Adam. Your storyline uh, when you won the uh, Tag Team Championship with Nicholas, a fan, what did you think of it when you got pitched? Well, a fan, but what did you think of it? I, I thought it was an, an awesome opportunity, and um, a lot of people didn't like it. Um, and I can understand that because they did such a good job of protecting me and, and making me into the monster among men. But you can only run so far being this undestructible inhuman monster so it was an opportunity to kind of humanize me and, and to show that I was more than just like fee fi fo fum I'm going to grind your kids up to make my bread it showed that I was compassionate and stuff like that and, and it really resonated with the younger audience which is which makes up a lot or mostly of my my fans and demographic are the kids so it was showing that this larger than life this scary monster is really a I'm, I'm a giant teddy bear in real life unless you piss me off and then I turn into a grizzly bear and I'll eat your face. But yeah, um, it was really special, especially too because it was, it's John Cone's son, the referee of the match, and I'm very close with John. I have a great relationship and stuff like that. And Nicholas did such an unbelievable job that I took a percentage of my money that I got paid at WrestleMania and donated it to him for his college fund. Oh, wow. It's magnificent. Right, over here to your, slightly to your left. Hello, go ahead. Uh, Adam, you never had a TV run in NXT during your first time. You went straight to the main roster. Do you regret that at all? And are there any things you wanted to, would have liked to do or people you would have liked to work with in NXT at the time? No, not really, because I ended up working with everybody that I was in developmental with. Eventually, they got called to the main roster, and it's like, you know what? If I don't have to do the minor leagues, I can go straight to the pros. Let's go. Makes perfect sense. Right, coming through, madam. Uh, what's your question, please? 
Hello, it's for Joe. Um, I just wondered, are we going to see you at AEW's um, Forbidden Door pay-per-view at all? You coming out? There's a better chance of me just going to Japan. <laughs> What's in Japan? Sushi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go here. Go ahead. Uh, to both of you, how, how do you think the industry has changed since you started out compared to now? What's been sort of the biggest difference in the years that you've been in this, in this industry? The size of the athletes, and I'll <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, it's different. Uh, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, backstage. Uh, just etiquette and being a good human being, it's, it's lacking sometimes and it has nothing to do with like old school respect anything like that it's just being respectful to people period and i think that's changed for the worse um you don't go to a new job and not try to meet everybody you work with from the lighting crew to the tech people you you go and you introduce yourself because that's what the good humane thing to do is and this business is 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 changing for the worse and in, in in that way there's people that work with WWE that do all the lights and they, they rig up everything from town to town and the guys that have worked up there for 10 years don't even know what the guy's name is. And that's a disrespect thing. And that's the only thing that I think has changed for the worse. Cool I'll, yeah, I'll definitely touch on that. That's what I said. It's, um, with WWE and especially with our time with Y family and everything, it, we're on the road and we're around each other so much. Like it's it's a family and it's you're just uncourteous. Like going, it's like going home and not saying hi to your mom after you've been gone for a week. And it's just we're around each other and you know we lean on each other. We're all going through the same stuff. We miss our families. We miss our loved ones. We miss day to day life. And it's just yeah, respect is a big thing that and what he said that I've seen slowly diminishing and it's it's not even just wrestling I think it's a, as a whole thing I think a lot of there's a lot of negativity in the world and that's what the cool thing with professional wrestling and, and a, a lot of the people that take it serious it's an opportunity to, to shine a positive light on the world there's so much negativity and negativity feeds off negativity it takes one ray of positive light to burn through that stuff and it's just more people need to realize that like I said that whole living your life like controlling your narrative you get one shot at life why not be happy yeah, yeah. Words to live by. Right, uh, question over here. Yeah. This is a question for both of you. Um, I'm over here. Yeah. Um, who was your biggest inspirations growing up in and outside wrestling? Oh, for me, my dad. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, yeah, he's my superhero. Uh, I got to travel around. I grew up in the back of a van watching him play softball over in the United States and stuff like that. And, uh, just the respect that he commanded in the dugout with his peers as athletes like that's how I want my my co-workers my friends I want everyone to look at me the same way they looked at him with the respect because he was a man that if he looked you in his eyes and told you something he did it so I try to keep those values instilled in me and yeah without a doubt I mean I wouldn't be where I am one I wouldn't be where I am without him because look at the freaking genetics he gave me and two, yeah, I mean, the tough love. When I was a bad kid, I got my butt whipped, and I'm thankful for it because it, it, it taught me right from wrong, and I'm doing all right in life, I think. And I don't mean to sound cliche, but, yeah, my dad as well. Uh, you learn a lot from your parents growing up, and for me, you don't understand it all right away. And... He worked two, three jobs at a time. My mom would do overnights. They'd barely see each other. Just put food on the table. And we didn't have fancy stuff. We, you know, we, we shopped at, you know, the, was it like a the rummage, rummage sale, garage sales. Like, everything was hand-me-downs. Nothing, nothing, like, money meant nothing back then. And uh, it was just, I wanted time with my dad. And I didn't get it because he was working. And he'd be asleep on the couch every night, and I saw how hard he worked for his family, and I, I saw that, and now as a father, like, I try to install some of those values, you know, with my kids, yeah. where I, you know, try to spend as much time as I can. So, like, he's a big inspiration to me, still is. And as far as wrestling uh, influence goes, um, my wrestling dad, Kane, Big Glenn, 
Uh, he's yeah. my uncle. <laughs> he, he's uh, definitely uh, number one. Yeah, that's what I'll touch on that. Yeah, with Kane, Kane, and then uh, I called Big Show. Big Show's my dad, and Undertaker's my grandpa, and Mark Henry's my <laughs> uncle. So like, I was raised by the the best giants in the business, and we were, like I said, both of us so very fortunate to learn from those guys and and them be willing to take us under their 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 learning tree, you know, and and pass down the knowledge. Because I mean, when you talk wrestling, you you can't talk wrestling without mentioning those four names. And I like to hope that we both. Uh, made them proud by passing on and continuing to keep the uh, the legacy of the, the giant alive as it's slowly being phased out in this business. <laughs> Fair play. Right. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Oh, sir. <laughs> no. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, you mentioned about Control Your Narrative. When are they going to have a UK TV deal over here? So um, right now we just launched Pro Wrestling TV. It's an app on Android and Apple. It's available around the world. There's a free version of it and a premium version of it. So Control Your Narrative is on there. Uh, AAA Wrestling, Warrior Wrestling. There's a bunch of different podcasts. We're working on original content. Uh, free the Narrative 1 and 2 are on there. Um, currently, and we're finishing editing it up the, um, our show that we had, um, the, the Awakening Dallas, where uh, the main event of Awakening Dallas was myself and EC3 versus Big Red and Big Damo for the main event. So we're finishing editing up that show, and it will be on Pro Wrestling TV in the next week or two. So that's where you can find all CYN. And we're currently in talks of uh, getting either by the end of the year or by, uh, beginning of next year coming over here and doing a tour for it because you guys are the best fans on the earth. Tremendous, right? I am behind you, I'm afraid. Uh, we'll see if the see if the chairs survive the neck crank. Um, what's your question? Um, were you um, were you a fan when you were younger, and what got and what got you into wrestling? So for me, I was. Uh, we didn't have cable or anything like that. I grew up out in the middle of nowhere, and the same thing. Like I, we didn't have a lot. Like we had food on the table, and, and we were thankful for it. Um, so for me, when I got to watch wrestling as a kid, it was when I would go visit my cousins, which was only like once a year because I grew up in North Carolina, and my family was from Wisconsin. So it's 1,700 miles apart. So I'd only usually get to see my family once a year, and that's when I would get to watch wrestling. And then later on um, during the Attitude Era is when I was in high school was when, uh, yeah, Stone Cold and The Rock were beating each other up every week, and that was when wrestling was like – I'm a teenager and this is awesome. And that's when I kind of was like, you know what? This is what I want to do when I grow up. And then it kind of phased out of my life because um, I went and was playing semi-professional football, softball. I've done all kinds of stuff. And then um, I started competing in World's Strongest Man competitions. Uh, 2011, I won North America's Strongest Man. 2012, I won the Arnold Classic. And then I was at World's Strongest Man 2013 when, uh, or excuse me, 2012 when WWE approached me and offered me a tryout. And then I went down to the, to, it was FCW building at the time. I went down and did a tryout and then signed with WWE. And they threw me in the deep end of the pool. And here we are. Uh, and for me, you know, I, I watched a little bit when I was a kid. Uh, then I started playing football, doing a little bit of theater in high school. And I watched a match with... Uh, Kane and Test from some pay-per-view back in the day. And I remember watching it and be like, oh, this is a little different than I remember, you know, like Hulk Hogan slamming Andre. I was like, this is cool. A couple big guys, like, beating the crap out of each other. I was like, I'm, I'm going to train to be a wrestler. Uh, so, hey, Mom, I'm going to quit college. I was, she, that did not go over well at all. And uh, I was like, I'm going to It's I'm all train. making sense now. Now <laughs> I'm understanding why you're the way you are. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I quit college. I said I'm going to train to be a wrestler. And it, it, it took sorry, me about it eight years uh, of hard up. work got, and uh, really being a young up. boy at a dojo in Japan. And I finally made it. So, you know, if you have a dream, you know, you focus on that and you drive yourself to do it and you dedicate yourself to what you want. Control one's narrative, perhaps. Absolutely. Um, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up this time. You gentlemen have been fantastic. Thank you for being so open and honest. Do you have any last words uh, for your fans here from Liverpool and further afield? Also, you, you have a match tonight, sir. 
um, with a gentleman called Sonna Durson. Do you have anything to say to him? Ooh. Oh. Okay. I like to be surprised when I get in the ring, so, you know. We'll see. Have I worked him before? You, uh, it is a rematch from Raw in Manchester, sir. How long was that match? Probably not as long as Sonna would have liked. <laughs> or very quick, painless. <laughs> okay. Painless. Okay. Painful. Oh, painful, yeah. Trust me, I know I wrestled him the other week. He's a stiff prick. <laughs> <laughs> fake, but fake, but, but I'm going to say, uh, yes, I guess I have a wrestling match tonight. And uh, if any of you guys are going to stick around for it, hopefully see you there. It's going to be fun. Oh, thank you. It is. It's going to be out this world. Don't get a better crowd than here. Um, and do you have any final words for us, sir? No, it's been over two and a half years since I've been over to the UK and stuff like that, and uh, I was jazzed up to come back. Y'all are so much fun to perform in front of. I'm a little actually jealous that he's getting to wrestle, and no one asked me if I wanted to wrestle. So I might just run in on something and might not, or I might drink a beer because y'all got great beer over here too. So just thank you. I thank you so much for the support, the energy you bring every time we come over, all this, every wrestling event. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Uh, please, for the love of wrestling, show your appreciation for Joseph Rudd and Adam Sheehan!